Hey traders from around the world, what's going on? Holla at your boy, it's me, Jeremy Alexander Newsom with Real Life Trading. First and foremost, thanks for everyone who subscribes to our YouTube channel. I really appreciate it, it means the world to me. Thanks for emails and comments over the last few days. If you have emailed me and I haven't got a chance to get back to you yet, just give me a few more hours. <laughs> uh, I'll make it happen. It's just the last four days have been, uh, how do we say, exciting. SPY, good flipping grief. Oh my goodness. Wow. All right. So here's what we got. Uh, let me read you my analysis from yesterday after we got yesterday's candle. Let me hide my drawings here for a moment. Oops, I can't hide them all, I guess. Uh, all right. I'll just read this then and uh, kind of come back and look at what's, what I got. So I am looking for a bearish play short term, but the bearish play, well, let me just read this. Looking for a bearish play. I'll wait towards the close of the day uh, for a nice bearish candle. Think of 12, 30, 15. If we get that, and SPY goes bullish, trapping the bears, 2016, higher, high, higher lows coming. If we roll over, awesome. I do not expect to close above the 624 candle, which is this candle right here. If we do, again, serious bull market trend coming. Um, and at this particular point in time, as of today, high chance I get into a strangle uh, slash butterfly of some sort because there's going to be a lot of volatility here. There's a lot of resistance. We did break through the resistance by uh, by two pennies. So the high of this candle, 206.91, high of this candle, 206.93. So let me kind of refer to what, what the heck I'm talking about over here. And again, when I'm looking at the market, oftentimes I try to do comparisons. So here's the last two really, really strong bearish days when they came back to back, uh, was back here in December before the end of the year. Then we got some bullish candles that were really uh, just shocking a lot of people. And in this wave count, I might be wrong, and I probably am, but in this wave count, I think we're right here. This candle. Strong two bullish candles. So really these two candles are the equivalent of yesterday's candle. And today's candle would be the December 23rd candle. So at this juncture, I'm thinking the next two days probably look a little bit like this. That's what I'm kind of anticipating uh, for the next two days. Then I think we break above the high. Okay. Then people hop on bullish. And from there, if we are going to roll over, that's where it happens. So if I'm looking for a bearish play, this is where I'm going to keep my eyes on. Uh, if we get something like that for a very, very quick bearish play, uh, I'm going to come in here to an hourly chart and kind of give you my time frame here on the hourly. And again, let me just hide these drawings really quick and I'll fill those in for you in a second. So here's a little bit of a double bottom, which on Monday, a lot of traders got in bullish. Got to give a shout out to Jonathan Higgins, who said Brexit has been very kind to him. On Monday, we mentioned, and I said, a very, very high chance that we trade up and then roll over. Absolutely said that. Still think we might have a rollover of some magnitude. I do not think um, it's going to be bad as everyone wants it to be or everyone thought it'd be. Uh, I was 100% confident that we would get this retracement. This is the part, this wave rotation I might be wrong on, which is really surprising to myself and a lot of other people. So anyway, wave count. One, two, three, four, five. Then ABC. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen on the hourly chart. So if you're looking to go bearish, just be careful over the next two days because a lot of people are going to try to go bearish here. And uh, if you want to get into a straddle or strangle of some kind or an option play where you're playing both calls and puts, this would probably be a decent uh, situation or location to consider it. So turning this back on, um, yesterday I was looking to go bearish if it was going to roll over and it didn't. So again, here's the pink wave, the pink wave signifying that we trade up and then roll back down, which again is still a possibility, but it's going to start having to happen very soon. So if tomorrow, next two days, we get some patterns like this, so boom, 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 and then we break out of that pattern bearish, we could really move nicely. Uh, oh, oh man, I'm not sure though. I'm really not sure. I still have a lot of neutral positions. I've got a lot. I mean, looking over everything, I have a lot of bullish positions. A lot, a lot. Let's go through them. SPY, I got a covered call at 204. If I get exercise on that one, I'm not going to worry about that. I got $1.71 for that covered call. So again, I'm expecting maybe a little bit of a pullback and something like this of some magnitude on the SPY. 
But let's just go through some of these positions. Uh, before I get to the bullish PayPal, I was in bearish on PayPal. We got triggered in here, we had a stop here, got stopped out, trailed out today for about 0.3 R, so very, very small. Second bearish trade that I got into was Seagate, took some little STX, got in based on this double top, boom, 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 got triggered in right there, got stopped out right there. One R loss, no big deal. So the rest, uh, we know about SPY. Uh, here's British Petroleum, took some little BP, very nice candle, closing above resistance, got a 36 July covered call. Strong, strong candles, strong volume. Folks, there are already candles which are taking out the Brexit high. By the way, yes, I do despise the term Brexit. But a lot of stocks, a lot of stocks are already taking out that high. That is a huge indication to me that I think we do end up going higher in the markets. And again, I'm not a perma bear. It's hard to go bearish long term in this market. This market is serious. Um, in fact, I got to go ahead and read another uh, post I was looking at on Facebook here that was just honestly summed it up so well for me. Uh, this was, it's even better than my analysis. Well, I shouldn't say it's even better than my analysis. It was better than my analysis and better than a lot of people's analysis. So if you get a chance, this is a good group. Uh, let me see if I can scroll down here. I might not be able to find it. It's a pretty active post. Uh, there we go. Okay. So um, Joe, uh, Joe Alba, you know this guy, but I should probably friend him because he's so good. Anyway, SPX will drop, and uh, mm -hmm. then I'm leaning towards a higher low. However, if it takes out the low and does not rebound, um, it will threaten the bull market, which I feel is very unlikely at this particular time based on U.S. economic, economic fundamentals. Uh, however, after this drop, which has happened, we will be off to the races, going much higher into 2017 and eventually bubble territory. That has been what I've been saying for the last two years. I, I really still think we're in some type of bullish bubble, which has not popped yet. Um, so if I come back over here, I know I'm kind of derailing them all over the place right now. SPY, so here's the pullback, here's a higher low. If we take out, if we close above that candle, I'm not saying go bullish right there, by the way, but just letting you know. Because if it closes above this tomorrow, let's say it does that, right, tomorrow, I'm gonna wait for two or three days of a pullback and then get in. Just letting you know, we've already had three very, very strong days of movement. So wait for a small pullback if you're looking to get in bullish. But if we do close above that candle on SPY or any other stocks, we are likely huge chance we're gonna go higher, make higher highs. Exxon Mobil has already taken out the Brexit high, no big deal. Gorgeous morning star reversal pattern, just doing its thing. Exxon Mobil got a 95 October covered call on XOM. Nike, took some little NKE, had a put sale on Nike. $50 put sale, earnings were today. It was a bullish retest gap, gapped up, traded down, bounced. And uh, on Nike, uh, that particular put sale looking good. So my analysis on this one right now, if the put sale is below 15 cents on Tuesday, I will buy the close. Under Armour, took some little UA. Uh, again, these are all bullish positions, right? Under Armour had a July $35 put sale for 50 cents. My note was I will buy to close this if it's worth 15 cents or less before July gets here. It's before July gets here. It was 15 cents today. Bought it to close. Under Armour looks pretty tasty. Potential double bottom here. Retest gap. Let it retest for a little bit of a neckline action. And then uh, mm -hmm. take it from there. Um, let me see what else we have out there. Uh, Panera Bread. Take a simple PNRA. Panera, got a July 220 covered call on Panera Bread. Apple, of course, everyone knows I love Apple. Uh, got a covered call expiring this Friday, but I'll I'll wait until Friday before I have to buy to close that one. But we can't argue this. One white soldier out of support um, on Apple, and Garrison has an 85 put sale. So real life trading, we have been bullish. Uh, I've been bullish for a while. I do not have a lot of bearish positions. I'll look at some of those, but let me kind of get through the rest. Uh, what else is out there? Facebook. Took some little FB, got a 115 July covered call. Uh, I like this gap right here, but Facebook has already taken out the Brexit high and closed above it. So I'm sensing a lot of bullishness out there. It's looking good. Uh, LNG, LNG got a 38 covered call for July, and then a few more put sales got into one today. Took some little RIG, $9 for August 22. And then last but not least, Starbucks, SBUX. Well, actually, got one more. Starbucks, uh, $50 put sale for July is going to expire just fine. And uh, Delta, took some little DAL, gonna get put some shares on Friday. And I'll turn right around and do a covered call. But uh, Delta got hit hard, doing its thing. And Netflix got a, 
I guess I have more bullish positions than I thought I did. Netflix, I'm just going through them. Uh, got a $90 put sale expiring, not this Friday, but next Friday. Here's Netflix, by the way, at a weekly 100 simple moving average. We've said time and time again, it's a great support. Looking like it's gonna bounce, looks pretty, uh, pretty good and uh, all that kind of good stuff. So Netflix looks good. By the way, Nike looks great for a long-term long down here, FYI. I really like that. I think this is a wave five ABC correction. Good volume, good, good candle. If you want to own a nice blue chip stock long term, four to five year hold, uh, that one could really run. Um, sorry, I'm definitely all over the place. There's been so many things going on. I'm so excited about it. All right, Google, G O O G L. How do you bull put spread on Google? 670, 660 expiring this Friday. I was watching it very close on Monday. Uh, been trade kind of slowly creeping my stop higher on Google because it did break below support. It is retesting, I agree. Yes, there are some stocks that are still a little bit bearish out there, uh, but really a lot of them are kind of already overtaking uh, everything else. So I think that about covers it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So the only two bearish positions I have out there is Tesla, 220, 225 bear call spread for July, which is above both long-term moving averages, uh, retest gap, Expecting something like this to occur. Does it have to, of course, but if it doesn't, I'll probably just have to unravel Tesla again. And then Pandora. Um, Pandora, a little bit of an upper shadow. So if Pandora closes above that wick within the next two or three days, I'm just gonna exit the bear call spread that I'm in on Pandora and probably uh, get into some shares or calls. Pandora, oh, I keep choosing the wrong one. Pandora looks good on a wave count and a triangle. So check this out. Nice little triangle pattern right here. Got a gap action today, breakout. If I do a wave count, one, two, three, wave four, potentially a wave five, volume on the three. We play this bullish for some nice gains and probably it's gonna do it again. So if it closes above 12.92 and Pandora a little bit more bullish and bearish. And gold, GLD, got a 127, 128. And if we break above 127.05, I will unravel. So those are the only three bearish positions I got out there right now. There's not a lot going on. Got stopped out of the two directional bearish trades. So anyway, I guess boiling all that up, all I'm saying is if you have some bullish positions, I think that's an okay thing. Yes, volume is declining. Yes, all the perma bears out there are going to say, oh, it's okay, guys, just hold through that and that'll happen. I do think we get some simile uh, of that, but these, these bullish moves on the retest, if and when it comes in, I think is a viable opportunity just... FYI. Got to give a shout out to my buddy in Hawaii, Derek Washington. Uh, he found this IPO, beautiful put, uh, pennant pattern, great bullish gap and go yesterday and today. And uh, he got massive R's on this trade, something like double digit R's. So Derek Washington, who's uh, one of the day traders through the hedge fund here at Real Life, uh, with Real Life Trading that we're partnered with. Derek, great job, man. Got to give you a shout out. Beautiful stuff. General Motors, had a few traders ask about General Motors. I don't personally trade General Motors. I'm letting you know I'm not gonna be doing this trade, but General Motors is a great support. Great support, one white soldier today. I think General Motors is a good old good old American blue chip company. Buy and hold, buy low, sell high. Uh, General Motors, kind of that stock right now. Great one white soldier. Got a lot of traders who do have shares of GM and uh, it's out of support. I never thought it would make it back down there, back up into here, but it did. Uh, there's actually kind of your support breakdown. Boom, 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 boom. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, looks good on GM. That one's looking all right. One last thing, just letting you know, as a reminder, a month from today, approximately a month, about four and a half weeks, Real Life Trading is going on a cruise. Just a reminder. So if you want any of the details, you can email me or go to youtube.com and type in Real Life Trading Cruise. And watch the video that comes up. Boom, there it is. It's going to be the first one. And scroll down here for the details. If you want action on this cruise, you need to start buying very soon. It's an Alaska cruise. It's going to be amazing. Uh, so I'm going to be off for a week in August. And I'm also going to be taking off this Friday and Monday. So there's a chance that I'll be doing another covered call Friday. Uh, I'm sorry, a real life stock review Friday and Monday. But just in case I don't, uh, it is a vacation. You know, Take time off. Enjoy your friends and family. Enjoy some good food. Enjoy the freedom, the freedom of America. Uh, don't go see Independence Day too. It's terrible, and uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. Those are all my PSAs. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. You guys are amazing. And until next time, remember: love life, live life, and trade it. See you.